there you go. <laughs> What's going on, party people? What is going on? It's your ride share extraordinaire. Your super duper Uber drivers here, guys. Thank you. Thank you. You guys, you already know the deal. Before you hop in my ride, do me a favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. Poor favor. <laughs> Come on, let's do this. Hop on in, buckle in, and let's go. Yeah! Okay, okay, party people, welcome back. And if you're new to my channel, thank you for hitting the subscribe button. All right, folks, what are we talking about today? Money, 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 money. If you need some advice on money, there's a guy that Mr. Biden has appointed. And his name is Jerry Bernstein. You know, he's one of these guys. I'm not going to say what race, what people, you know, I can't say that. Yeah. So he's supposed to be the chief. He's a top guy. Yet there's a viral video of him. They ask him a simple question. Why do we borrow money and we print money? And he says this. Like you said, they print the dollars. So why why does the government even borrow? Well, um, the uh, so the I mean, again, some of this stuff gets some of the language that the MM MN, some of the language and concepts are just confusing. I mean, the government definitely prints money, and it definitely lends that money, which is why uh, the government definitely prints money, and then it lends that money by uh, by selling bonds. Uh, is that what they do? They, they, um, they, yeah, they, they, um, they sell bonds. Yeah, they sell bonds, right? Because they sell bonds and people buy the bonds and lend them the money. Um, yeah, I, I guess I'm just, I don't, I can't really talk. I, I don't, I don't get it. I don't know what they're talking about. Like, cause it's like the government clearly prints money. It does it all the time and it clearly borrows. Otherwise we wouldn't be having this debt and deficit conversation. So. I don't think there's anything confusing there. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. My head hurt on that one. My head hurt on that one. This is the chief guy. This is Biden's number one guy for economics advisor. And he can't even explain it in lamest terms on why U.S. borrow money. Yeah, I feel very confident, very confident with this guy to him. Not only that, the other day. He was on Fox Business, and Neil Cavuto asked him another simple question. Mr. Bernstein, why do Biden keep lying about the inflation numbers? And let's hear what he had to say. I do want to get behind why the president keeps claiming this. This is what talking about inflation. Take a look. We have dramatically reduced inflation from 9% down to close to 3%. We're in a situation where we're better situated than we were when we took office. It was 9% when I came to office. What? 9%. But it, look, people have a right to be concerned. I think inflation has gone slightly up. It was at 9% when I came in, and it's now down around 3%. Jared, why does he keep saying that? You're his top economic, you're the head of the Council of Economic Advisors. Do you ever whisper in his ear, Mr. President, just to be technical about it, it was at 9% when you assumed office, it was 1.4%. It got as high as 9% in 2022. You brought it down from that, but it was never, ever, ever 9% when you came into office. So why does he keep saying that? Well, first of all, let me point out that in that very quote you played, the president talked about how concerned he was uh, for households uh, struggling with prices that he consistently That's not characterizes what I asked as you. That's high. not what I asked okay, you. So Why does he that. keep misrepresenting okay. this? He's making the point uh, that the factors that caused inflation to climb to 9% were in place when he took office. No, I think that's it was not by... what he said. He said it was at 9%. It would eventually so get the... to 9% a little over a year after that. But the fact of well, the that's... matter is it wasn't 9%. So if I can't trust him quoting data in real time, why should I believe what he's talking about now? So the annual uh, growth in core inflation in the second quarter of 21 uh, was, in fact, about 9 percent. And his point about inflation down 60 percent off its peak is very much the case. So no, look, it wasn't. Uh, it, was again, not at, it was not at that. 
So you're, you're almost as bad as he is. Why can't you just say it was high, it got as high as 9%. You'd be accurate in saying that. And we have now brought it down and we're struggling in around the 3% area. But it's better than it was. But instead, to hang Listen, it on I, his predecessor, I, I, to hang it on his predecessor I, I, that you inherited something that was through the roof when we were in the middle of COVID, it just seems to the American people, so, whether you're a Republican or Democrat, hold, hold you're on, lying. Neil. You're just lying. Well, hold on. I hear you. I hear you. Uh, I, the, the president was making the point that I think is unequivocally true. The factors that uh, took inflation to nine percent were in place when he took that office. That is, is not what he said, Jared. And you're a very smart guy with this stuff. You could just whisper. He's a good friend of yours, obviously, thinks the world of you. Many others do as well. You could have just yeah, told you. him, Chief, I got to tell you, Mr. President, whatever you say, you might even that call him Joe. That's how close you so, are. So and look, just I mean, say, sir, it was not 9%. Stop it with the 9% because the more you say that, the more people don't believe what you're saying. Look, I think what the American people care most about is it's the fact truth. that in, inflation, the American people inflation, care about truth, Jared. Hold on, Neil. Neil, this only works if you let me talk, okay? You haven't answered inflation, my question. I've asked it five times, five, five ways. The, the, the president was making the point that the factors that caused inflation were in place when he took office, and that's unequivocally oh, true. Right. I take your point, and we can have uh, we can we can go on all day back and forth on this. I think what matters today is are we making progress? Wrong. No, it hasn't. Okay? So when I give you so, this, when I talk about <laughs> rent growth and grocery and related food costs that are exceeding wage gains, are you saying I just made that up? That I'm reading. I'm Wait, reading from the you, you Bureau of Labor Statistics. That, is that under your so, is that under your control too? So on a year over year basis, uh, wages of uh, middle wage workers went up 0.6 percent over the past year. I'll put this on Twitter when I get out of here. Uh, so that's that's a fact. Uh, that's and in fact, on a year over year basis, wages have been beating prices for I believe 14 months running. But I'll make sure that's right uh, when I get back to my office. That's that's on, All right, on the true. rent now, thing. On the rent thing and the fact that food costs, related costs, are exceeding. The, the wage growth that Americans are saying, you're saying that is not happening, that Americans' yeah, so wages are... Point. Wait, wait, uh, Americans, you're saying, I want to be clear, there is yep. exceeding whatever their costs are that they're enduring, because they would have something right. else to tell you. I, I'm not making a claim here. This is just a factual point that wage growth on a yearly basis is beating price growth and has been for middle wage workers for 14 months in a row. Now, so the core, let's talk about the, the core costs let's that Americans about, endure. On, you're hold saying, on. wait a minute, no, no, just to be clear, I have another you're question saying for that, you. that, that, is exceed, that, that that is not exceeding what they are making because Americans are telling well, otherwise. I don't know how else to say stopped. what I've said. Wait I've been minute, unequivocally they have stopped, clear. They have... Yeah, there you go. There you go. He's a politician. He sure is a politician. Did you know that Mr. Bernstein, he went to school, I think it was Columbia, and he majored in music. What? Majored in music. And he also got his doctorate, I believe, in social welfare. Music, guys. And now he's a chief economy advisor. He has no economic degree. He's a music background, but he's running our economics, and we all see it. Another DEI hire did not earn it. Well, all I got to say is we're f***ed. <laughs> if you guys got any value out of my content, do me a favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. You see that notification bell? Turn on that notification bell so you get my latest and greatest. Share this content with your best friends and tell your mama I said hi. <laughs> all right, all right. Till next time, guys, I'll see you again. And all you politicians, get your ass off my lawn.